A sugar worker sleeps fitfully beside me. She's having a nightmare. She says she's fighting the revolution, but she can't tell who's winning. Go back to sleep, says the organizer from across the bamboo floor. And keep dreaming until you know the people have won. The Philippines is my political kaleidoscope. It's here I met the people in this film. At first, their stories appear disparate, sometimes beautiful, sometimes cruel. Some take me underground with the left-wing revolutionaries, others into the heartland of the right-wing vigilantes. But sometimes, these different stories fall into a perfect pattern. In that moment, all our lives appear to fit one into the other. And the six o'clock news, it's never the same again. The first story to understand is the history of the land. Sugar workers on the island of Negros line up every morning, waiting for the landlord's foreman to assign them their day's work. He tells the women to weed in the new field and the men to cut the mature cane. There are 38 million Filipinos who live in the countryside, but only a million work their own land. The sugar worker bites into a stick of cane. The land used to be ours, she says, spitting out the sugar pulp. Now it's not. The Philippines, an archipelago of 7,000 islands in the South Pacific, so beautiful, so rich in natural resources, it became perpetual spoils of war. First, the Spanish and their church colonized the Philippines. Then came the Americans, followed by the Japanese, then the Americans again. On July the 4th, 1946, the U.S. granted Filipinos independence, introduced a red, white, and blue flag, and opened the doors to big business. Today, Filipino sugar workers cut and load a ton of cane a day for a dollar U.S. an election, politicians promise to give these people back their land. Since 1930, there have been 42 land reform decrees and nine legislative acts. The present government is working on the 10th, but Filipinos remain landless. In the people's need for land and desire to control their own lives lies a revolution. Lua, 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 
In the mountains, an 18-year-old boy takes an oath to the revolution, to the illegal underground Communist Party, and to its new people's army. His elder brother had joined the guerrillas and died fighting the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos. Now, the younger brother pledges to continue the revolution for the land and for the people. He joins the veterans of a guerrilla war who refuse to lay down their arms for the new president, Cory Aquino. Why not stop armed struggle and go down and join the uh, reform that the government is implementing? Well, it's a good idea, but uh, it is not consistent with what is happening since the uh, Aquino regime is, was established and uh, to the present. Corey. She won a presidential election with promises of land for the poor. Then she defied Ferdinand Marcos, who refused to relinquish power. Corey, whose people's power movement stopped the tanks of a dictator. The church called it a miracle. The military called it a revolution. But who was behind this revolutionary miracle? February 22, 1986. Factions within the military sense Marcos falling from power and cross over to join Mrs. Aquino. She needs an army, they need a president. Once the military begins to split, the other players fall into place. The middle class rallies beside the urban poor. They're joined by the church. Together, they form human barricades to stop the Marcos troops and to protect Mrs. Aquino's new army. Now, therefore, by virtue of the powers vested in me as president of the Republic of the Philippines... February 25th, 10 a.m. Cory declares herself president and she takes the first vows in her forced marriage to the military. She appoints Juan Ponce Enrile as defense minister. He's the same man who ran the military under Marcos. Her new chief of staff is General Ramos, former commander of the Philippine Constabulary. Two hours later, Ferdinand Marcos redeclares himself president and his wife Imelda as first lady. The United States, still supporting the Marcos regime after 22 years, is faced with a diplomatic nightmare. 9.05 p.m. Filipinos storm the presidential palace gates in search of Marcos. They don't find him. Moments before, U.S. helicopters had snatched the Marcos family from the palace. The dictator was gone. The military stayed. There are 58 million people in the Philippines. 80% of them live below the poverty line. 10,000 people a month migrate from their landless, jobless, rural villages to the slums of Manila looking for food, looking for work.
January 22nd, 1987. Manila is back on our television sets again. Sugar workers and farmers demand the land Mrs. Aquino has promised them. They gather at the Mendiola Bridge leading to the presidential palace. They are met with what is now called the new armed forces of the Philippines. people died and Mrs. Aquino wept. The miracle was over. For the survivors, the bullets of Mendiola pose a stark question. Should the left trust the government and risk demonstrating again? Or should they go underground and join the guerrilla war? Well, the cell wasn't wide There's a cool garden I retreat to in Manila. It belongs to Ed de la Torre, who is a priest, an artist, and a revolutionary. He understands the price of being a radical priest. This one is taken from a photograph of uh, children in a hamleted village. This is really barbed wire. All that it's Ed was twice imprisoned under Marcos for leading the underground Christians for national liberation. He was later released by Mrs. Aquino. I find him painting a mural outside of his Institute for Popular Democracy. With the Institute, Ed is again taking the chance that the military won't throw him back in jail. Once again, Ed de la Torre is speaking for the left with the common sense and humor, which are his trademark. And it's the to the guerrillas that the questions are posed usually. They don't usually question the military about using violence. They ask the guerrillas. The left in the Philippines never really had sustained legal existence longer than a year or so, that it was driven underground. And while even under martial law, the left tried to assert its presence in the legal sphere, it was very constricted. And most of the leaders of the left tend to train themselves or get pulled down into underground leadership roles. And I felt that maybe I would help participate in, one, giving the left a legal face that is able to participate in the democratic debate, not necessarily winning all of them, but able to hold its own, so as to break this prejudice, or at the very least the ignorance, about what left is and whether it can be democratic at all. Secondly, it's also important for our democracy that people do not have a notion of democracy that is constricted to shades of conservative thinking or just a choice between conservative and liberal thinking. Not so much for the sake of the left, but for the sake of democracy, for people who do not identify with the left, but who want a nice democracy for the Philippines. To tell them that, hey, look, democracy has space enough for all sorts of Filipinos thinking differently, Thinking in terms of colors, I said democracy must have as many colors as the rainbow. And there is no rainbow without red. It would be a terrible rainbow that had only yellow or blue. Of course, you can distinguish now whether the red is a white band or a narrow band. That's a something else. I leave Manila and go underground to the mountains of Mindanao, an island in the southern Philippines. Ten years ago, a student activist was driven underground into these same mountains. It was 1977 when George Madlos changed his name to Comrade Oris and never went home again. After bidding goodbye, we went through with the hike that lasted until the wee hour of the morning. At two o'clock in the morning, we arrived at the place. And uh, I didn't really uh, think of anything but uh, finding some way how to <laughs> be able to sleep and uh, to take a rest because I was really tired. In the early morning, when I wake up, I realized I was already in the countryside. 
I have a new life. Uh, I realize that I will be spending the rest uh, of the many years of my life being a revolutionary, being an NP by then. <laughs> The best way to mobilize the people is to organize them in the struggle for land reform. You visit a certain house and then you are the first NPE who happens to come to their house, happens to talk with them. Then, as the struggle goes on, you can never be forgotten by the owner of the house. Because you were the first organizer who was able to tell him about the revolution. So somehow, they begin to appreciate and understand that uh, the rule is to support the guerrilla war. The bits. 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 Rizal is a tribal Filipino who has fought alongside Oris for the past eight years. The Communist Party and its 20,000 guerrilla soldiers influence over 20% of the Philippines. Government forces, however, can and do venture into rebel territory. A woman harvests rice in front of Oris's mobile headquarters. She tells me she will go with the government troops if they come to her house and demand that she move out of the guerrilla zone. She's too frightened to defy the soldiers. However, her husband, she says, will hide in the mountains until the troops leave. Then he will return to his fields to continue the harvest and the revolution. To support the guerrilla war is to give a cup of rice to a revolutionary, to give the guerrillas a place to sleep, to hide them from enemy eyes. In return, guerrilla leaders like Oris say the revolution will give the land back to the poor, taking most of it back from the handful of families who now control the country. The revolutionaries promise to replace the thousands of square miles of export crops with farms growing food for Filipinos. They will restructure the military so it defends their people instead of persecuting them. And they will remove the U.S. military bases, two of which are the largest American bases outside of mainland United States. To Mrs. Aquino's government, these are the slogans of a violent revolution. To the rebels, they are principles which guide them in their fight to return the Philippines to its people. What really drove me to the underground was uh, when we organized the Shakada, then we have a strike, then I was uh, invited by the military, then they uh, tortured me. Then again, they asked me to report. Then I uh, didn't show up. I started hiding. Then I uh, slept in my friend's house. Then they went, when they uh, hunt me here in the barrio, we slept uh, in the fields. 
then when they raided the field, then to the mountain. Bernabe Buscano is known throughout the Philippines as Commander Dante, founder of the rebel New People's Army. He worked as a cicada, or sugar worker, and he organized the first guerrilla units around the edges of the American Clark Air Force Base. In 1976, Dante was captured by Marcos. He was tortured and spent the next 10 years in solitary confinement. Over the loud protest of the Americans, Mrs. Aquino later freed Dante, along with the rest of Marcos's political prisoners. I first saw Dante the day he was let out of prison. He was a thin man, made shy from years of solitude, now released into the nervous aftermath of Cory's four-day revolution. This area was uh, our base uh, during our time here. And we used to camp in that uh, sugar cane field near the fence of Clark Field, which a little bit safer because it's uh, close to the base and no one uh, was suspecting that there was a uh, guerrilla camp there. Dante didn't return to his guerrilla army in the mountains. Instead, he decided to test Mrs. Aquino's new democracy. <laughs> Commander Dante runs for senator. Mrs. Aquino has called an election to create a new Senate in Congress. Six senatorial and 23 congressional candidates join Dante. Together they form the PNB, the Partido Nang Bayan, or People's Party. The campaign starts in Manila as the first legal political party of the Filipino left in 57 years is introduced. Five of the senatorial candidates are ex-political prisoners. All seven have proven track records as leaders and organizers representing farmers, the urban poor, labor, women. One is a progressive publisher, another a human rights lawyer. They were the leaders of resistance under Marcos. Now, they are the left's challenge for parliamentary change under Mrs. Aquino. Davao, capital of Mindanao Island, home of vigilante death squads and radio DJ June Pala. Okay. Anak kong sa kabukiran, ikaw, anapa. Kalidag, Jun Puras pala, mag-auhag, surrender na, may garantiya. Ikan sa bukid, ayaw paglangan, palihog ka na, o bagong kagamhanan, garantiya, dili ka mabunog. Anay mong kaibigan, ibang kaupanan. Isilong nasa landong sa bagong buhilaman. Di mong kaigsuunan o kagigalaan. Kani mo gimingaw, nagkinahanggan. Aron sa amog pagkabata, huwag na'y magaluhang mga tagak. Pintaw, balik na, alam. O 
Okay, Miguela, tamp ko ba to, gikang kang lagang sa Bukana Chapter, Barangay 76-A. Purok to, bye-bye, dato dakwen si Dabao. Siyaro, go, matandog yung kasing-kasing mga rebeliha mo. Sige lang, magpamatay yung trabaho. Balik tao mo do. Huwag hinungdan. Kung mahadlok mag-surrender, po sila ang inyong commander. Metro Dabao Connection, Anti-Communist Crusade. If you can read history, when Hitler started to attack the communists, the Pope have an alliance with Hitler. So, um, you, you right now are using the same tactics as, yeah. as the Nazis. And I will not be killing people. Maybe Hitler is the same... Uh, I adopt one, some of the tactics of Hitler, but not in murder, in propaganda. What kind of tactics are you using? The tactic is that using the radio. Hitler used the radio in attacking the communist propaganda by telling lies. I am not telling the lies. I am telling the truth about communist Marxist, about their deception. That is our secret. What, what, are, what are some of the similar things that you're using? As the radio, you, according to Goebbels, the propagandist of Hitler, repeat all the facts against communism every day, every day, every day. Make it big and the people will believe in you. Look at the people now throughout the Philippines. They are fascinated with our attacks. And we have brainwashed people. Hundreds of thousands of them. The military leader of the anti-communist crusade is Colonel Franco Kalida. Colonel Kalida says that he personally cleaned all the communists out of Davao. His most effective weapon, the Elsa Massa Vigilante Group. Hello. The Alsa Massa are the people, people who used to be supportive and sympathetic to the communist movement, have already turned around 180 degrees against communism, and they are now Alsa Massa. <laughs> Alsa Massa means rising up from the people. Colonel Kalida's Alsa Massa control Davao. His jeep now patrols slums where two years ago the New People's Army was in charge. In order to have uh, a personalized and tighter control over the activities of the residents. Uh, so uh, we clean, we clean the, now the city of uh, these uh, NPAs or sparrows. So uh, we are not much worried now. It's safer. It's safer, of course. Davao City, once a communist stronghold, was targeted by US and Filipino military intelligence. Informers were nurtured. Vigilante groups were armed first with propaganda and then with guns. Now, Davao belongs to the Alsa Massa. In Dabo City alone, we have 800,000 or 900,000 members now of the Alsa Massa. Uh, almost all the corners have organized their Alsa Massa movement. And uh, do you think it is easy for us to uh, control 800 or 900,000 Filipinos? No. You, know, you should know our character. It's very hard to control. Did you uh, support the NPA before? No. Never before? Never before. But uh, we are just only... We are uh, indoctrinated by their, uh, by their doctrine. And now are you indoctrinated by the Elsa Massa? Yeah. Agdao is a village within Davao City. When the communists controlled it, the people called it Nicaragdao. Now, Agdao is the home of the Elsa Massa and its founder, Boy Ponsa. Boy tells me he was once an NPA guerrilla this, he says, qualifies him to say who is and who is not a communist in his burial. I have my own policy. If we have MPA, we will surrender. Now, we know who are the MPAs. We will monitor all the kilos of them. So that's it. Your word is good enough. You don't need any court of justice, any lawyers. Your word is good enough to say, this guy is an MPA. No, if they are MPA, I'll bring to the uh, Metro Discom Commander. We give them the facts. They have two times, three times, four times. 
Ngayon, kapag hindi nag-surrender, yun ang aming kalaban. Ayun, kapag nakita kami, barila na lang. How do you get them to surrender? Pinaabot ko sa kanilang mga parents. I told them the parents that they will surrender. Now, if they will not surrender, uh, maybe tomorrow they will die. What did the Elsa masses say? What happened to your son if he did not surrender? Um, they will kill my son because uh, he is uh, enemies against her because he is uh, NPA. Who would kill your son? Uh, the merit military and also the Elsa Masa because uh, they are uh, enemies. You see, now it's an Elsa Masa territory. What do you think will happen to uh, a communist or an NPA who, who still would like to live in the area? Uh, well, if he retaliates uh, with his firearm, then something will happen. U.S. militarists call these dirty little wars. There are 80 conflicts like this currently burning around the world. The Americans, fearing the spread of communism, are directly involved in four of them, in Nicaragua, Angola, El Salvador, and the Philippines. The Pentagon classifies the war in the Philippines as a low-intensity conflict, or LIC. Their strategy is to defeat the left. American combat forces are to be used only as a last resort. Instead, Nicaraguans are turned against Nicaraguans. Filipinos fight Filipinos. I personally feel that uh, any doctrine of low intensity conflict will not only hit the armed resistance, it will also try to constrict the legal space, both by trying to shut out the left through various legal means, but also, and it's starting, through the so-called privatization of terror where you don't use the military outrightly, but paramilitary groups to harass and eventually even to kill uh, legal left leaders. Three weeks before the election, Dante and the PNB touched down on the island of Mindanao. Under the watchful eyes of the vigilantes, they run straight into accusations of being a communist front. Hindi naman pwede. Yan po ay isang pananaw ng mga social philosophers. Isang sistema ng lipunan na hango dun sa salitang common. Sama-sama. Ano ba yung karit at maso? Yung karit at maso, yung karit, yun ang kumakatawan. Ano ba yung karit? Di ba panggapas? Yun ang kumakatawan dun sa magsasaka. Yun namang maso, panggawa ng Asarol, panggawa ng kagamitan bakal, ibig sabihin ng manggagawa. Kahit yung mga, pero pin, pagka naglalagay nga sila sa Maynila, ng mga streamers, nakalagay doon, ang naglalagay dito yung mga kalaban natin, yung mga nananakot tungkol sa komunismo, ilalagay doon, ihalal yung mga kandidato ng partidong bayan, lalagyan nila ng karit, ang tulis-tulis ng karit, parang panakot. Pagkatapos, yung maso, laki-laki ng pamukpok. Parang pangalawit ng leeg. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, meron na ba ang... Meron na ba ang hold up na komunista sa inyo? Meron na ba ang nag-rape na komunista sa inyo? Meron na ba ang nag-1, 2, 3 na komunista sa inyo? Meron na ba ang nambatong komunista sa inyo? Meron na ba ang torture na komunista sa inyo? Wala! Oh, si Bustaino, si Bongo, si Capulo, si Tadeo, si Nivares, si Sancho, si Beltran, kini mao ang kandidato sa katawan. Kini ang mabalayon sa atong tingong katawan.
In the white area, I have more than 10 code names. I have Gina, GC. I have Vicky. I have Didja. And I have my first code name since I was a part timer was Lutis. And it's funny because comrades called me Lutis because the night before they went to my house, they have seen a TV show of Lutis. Who are you now? Dadang. Eight years ago, Dadang studied agricultural engineering at a local university. Today, she organizes revolutionary governments in villages behind the guerrilla lines. Dadang is building a conference site for 30 revolutionaries who work in the city. To get here, they must travel on the highway, crossing through government checkpoints before they discreetly disappear into the mountains. Here, they can openly plan their revolution. Of America. I'm Don 
Folsom in Washington. Government teachers don't come to this area anymore, so Dadang has trained local girls to be teachers in her revolutionary schools. These children are where, where the one we're fighting for. Their future is where the one we're fighting for. And if they will grow in the revolution without learning how to read and write, it's terrible because these children also are, will be our future comrades and cadres. Greetings. How is your life there? Is there any operation of the military? About the landmines, blasting machines, claymore mines, and other materials? Me go. Information. It's crucial to the survival of Dadang and Oris's revolution. News comes into camp by radio or in tiny letters. Chicklets, they're called. Folded small enough to eat if the messengers are searched at a roadblock. The information is brought by barefoot farmers, city workers, and guerrilla soldiers. Maybe you know what happened to my husband. I have a hard time to adjust psychologically, emotionally, living alone without him. So that I can continue serving the revolution. What is the response of my sweetheart Christy about my decision not to continue a relationship? For the people and the revolution. No real. For victory of our struggle, feeler. Poloi, the radio operator, rigs up an antenna over the highest tree. He speaks the local dialect with splashes of radio English. Roger, he says, over and out. And when he can't understand my bad Filipino, he grins and sighs and says, negative copy. The radio keeps the headquarters in daily contact with its roaming guerrilla units. Its coded electronic beeps connect a network of jungle camps like these with the underground headquarters in Manila. Kasandi Imang Oris Junas, how are you? And warm revolutionary day. We brought you the details of what has happened to Batman. Batman. An American comic book code name for a young Filipino guerrilla. A week after we arrive, Dadang receives a letter. Batman, a new recruit, has stolen an M16 rifle and fled from the main guerrilla unit. Rumors whisper he's gone over to the military. He's been seen at government roadblocks. He's pointing out local people who support the NPA. The region is on red alert. The guerrilla soldiers are mobilized to warn the local people and to find out if government forces are moving in. Mm. anti-communist crusade and work toward the establishment of a new moral world. Ogsila atong kung kiron pasiuna. 
Di lamang pinagi sa armas, apang pinagi sa pulong, kundi words. There's a musical attack. So, if your reaction to communism, yes. So what ideology are you putting forward? Well, uh, it is a God-centered ideology. Although we have firearms, plus these firearms will be eliminated after we have succeeded. We only, we only teach the people to believe in God because. If a person believes in God, although he has gone, he will be having temper. Unlike the NPA, uh, the hardcore, they don't believe in God. At the same time, they have gone, they will kill and kill. What do you call this ideology of yours? God-centered ideology. Regardless of religion, whether you are a Muslim, God-centered. It means to say that we believe that there is God, supreme being. Regardless if your God is Christ or Jehovah, or Allah, Allah, God-centered ideology. It's only words. It's only words, and words are all I have to take your heart away. To take your heart away It's only words And words are all I have To take your heart away It's only words And words are all I have To take your heart Away. Bullets ricochet around an army detachment outside of Davao City. A runaway NPA prisoner bolts past our jeep. He escapes. Soldiers and vigilantes stare glumly into the jungle and at us. Here in the countryside, the military works with another vigilante group. This one calls itself the Holy Christians. They are also known as Tad Tads, which means chop chop in the local dialect because they chop off the heads of their communist enemies with their machetes or bolos. This is a war zone. The man in charge of running the war and the Holy Christians is the local armed forces of the Philippines commanding officer, Lieutenant De La Rosa. Who, who there? The cities, communist terrorists, NPAs. How far are they from here? Just about uh, air distance is uh, 500 meters, four to 500 meters. Just over that hill. Right now, they even, uh, they were firing on us over there. And I think uh, the purpose of that is just to attract our attention so that whenever they fire their guns, we will uh, respond to them. And uh, right on the, on the way, they will be conducting some ambush position. Are the NPAs winning out here? I don't think so. With the help of civilian volunteers, the holy mm. Christian crusaders, they've been contributing a lot for making these people go back to the folds of the law. I'm with me and love me, along shall stay. 
I guess I'll always be this old old Can you tell me how you work with the uh, Holy Christians, with all the other groups, which some people refer to as the fanatical groups? These people, they came here in this place with the purpose, with the sole purpose of spreading peace. So I don't uh, see any violence and with their, uh, they have really noble intentions. So I welcome them. We welcome them. They are free to roam around this place. I guess I'll always be soldier of all two. We have a close coordination with the military, not on their abuses, but on their uh, what we call operation against the communists. But first, before we do that, we have to get the sympathy of the civilians. As June Palace nightly broadcast penetrates the Filipino night, vigilantes roam the streets. They're looking for guns, communists, and leftists. American time. Today, para magkita ta sa lugar, pero wai pakana ay ha. Osa kada osa kasipiat idismantol na imo purti pa ba? Osa kasipiat ni mo tanda mo lawas bala. Pero kami po di makupyan sa kay dapat mga pakana ang surrender. We have a map here presented to this uh, letter writer, Ernan Sawata, Sibuli, Narsiri, Dato Balong, posting ang military, detachment to the military, as ang kampo. Dasa masa is born. You're a very unfortunate baby. Hmm? Just pray to your, uh, to your Russian God. Because you don't have God. Our purpose is to preserve the Roman Catholic Church in the ruins of some deception made by some priests and nuns, especially the redeemed terrorist priest. And the Assumption Nuns of Davao City. Mga gabi, ikang Father Edwin, tulibagbag. Dili, dahi ka matabang, no? Dili ka matabang, dahi ka tambang, malikyuri naman dahi ka sa mga aktivistang pare sa St. Xavier Seminary. It's Dr. Il. Clara Camp. Dolores Sal, Nelia Sab, Angilo Glo, Siano Basars, Leonardo K. Mm. Barok, Ariel, Ana, Musta mo dia? listahan sa kuwadre. You are now under surveillance. Bino 43 minutos lapas karun sa last year's bigger. Hatangi karun taon-taon ang atong Catholic Women's Anti-Communist Crusade. Umangyan po sa pipila ka mahinundo. I told them that they are now under surveillance. What does that mean? What will happen to them? What will happen to them? I don't know. What will happen to them? Because they are sympathizers. You just warned them not to support the NP. And if they support the NP, what will happen to them? They support us after the... It's up for the tad-tad to tad-tad them. Nadungog na ko. March 3, nadungog na ko. Alas 10 sa gabi eh. Hindi pang hinganlan pa mangani niya kung kinsa mga tao. Unang pangalan pa si Peter. Itong higayuna, nagipanghingan lang niya, nga magbantay lang mo. Na naunom sila ka tao. Peter Alderetti. He was chopped to death by Tad Tads using bolos in front of 30 witnesses. He was a union leader. No arrests were made. The killer said that uh, aside from Peter, uh, they are going to finish the six union officers on that day. Uh, actually, they give us until 12 o'clock in the afternoon to surrender. After that, they will, we will be scheduled for chopping. I asked Lieutenant De La Rosa if his Tad Tads and their bolos were responsible for the Alderetti killing. Yeah, they have bolos, but we are not allowing them to kill anybody. What, what are you going to do further to investigate it? Yeah, I, right after that incident, I told them not to roam around anymore because I, I've heard of reports that uh, they were the one who was responsible. So I told them not to go around and you, to... You heard reports that the Holy Christians were responsible? Well, uh, that's uh, based on our uh, investigation. The man who was killed in Mandong, did you warn him over the radio before? 
the do you know that Tadtal group is not our group? It is only a newly organized group, and it is not affiliated to our group. But still, you just warned other people that if they didn't. Uh, That's why yeah, I, I also warned them to surrender. And you also threatened them with the tan tan, with the chop chop. Mm hmm. We only threatened them, not unlike didn't pay the ambush our men and kill our men. But you're using your radio to terrorize people. No, terrorize NPA, communist. Is that different than terrorizing other people? Well, uh, I'm terrorizing NPAs, and uh, those who are only terrorized are the NPAs and the communists. If they complain, you know these people are stupid. They always complain. But when we are the one victimized, do, we do not complain. That's why when I started, when I used this gun to have a general operation, blood will flow in the Philippines. I have not started my war yet. This is still the propaganda. But if the NP and the communists will challenge me to use my gun, to use my tadda and to use my arm, blood will flow. I will kill including the media. Connection anti communist crusade. Davao is on the six o'clock news. Mrs. Aquino has come to state her position on the Elsa Massa vigilantes. Her Excellency President Corazon C. Aquino. <laughs> Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ako'y nasisiyahan na makapiling kayo dito kung saan ipinanganak ang Alsa Masa. Alam niyo sa iba't ibang lugar sa ating bansa, ang problema nga ay yung pag-atake ng mga komunista. At ang kailangan palagi kong sinasabi, ay magkasunduan ang mga civilian at saka ang mga militar para mag-cooperate sila against the communist insurgents. Alam ko dito sa Region 11, you have succeeded in crushing the communists and we look up to you as the example in our fight against communism. <laughs> U.S. Secretary of State, George Shultz. The government must use its capacity by its strength to enforce law and order. As far as the citizens' groups are concerned, as I understand it, these are being organized within the framework of governmental authority. They aren't sort of free-floating vigilante groups and President Aquino has supported that approach and we support what she's standing for there. In the mountains of Mindanao, this jungle clearing doubles as a Catholic church for villagers, their children and guerrilla soldiers. The mass begins with a security briefing. Kung dirigi ka ng contact, mukogong ang squad trace, ang squad uno may mo pansalwan, mga masa. Pangadyo ng amana mo, o tingali, o wago na itong tanan sa pagtindog, o maguni tayo sa kamot. Father Frank Navarro is a Marxist, a Christian, a priest, and a guerrilla fighter. Being a priest doesn't uh, forbid me of carrying the weapons. Because if ordinary people, like sons of the farmers, were convinced and they are ready to risk their lives, why not a priest who has given his life for the people? If he is committed to work among the poor, the deprived and oppressed, to serve the poor sectors of the society, I am sure that this great task should be the priority of the priest. 
In Manila, Father Ed de la Torre prefers to remain a legal priest. I got invited to join the New People's Army, and I refused. First of all, I said, I'm not physically ready to go to the hills. My stomach is so colonized. <laughs> I will crave for ice-cold Coke, <laughs> and I will get caught going down to some town store to buy ice-cold Coke. And uh, I've, I've found out, you know, there are a lot of uh, New People's Army guerrillas who have been captured, put in prison. And the thing they crave most is <laughs> ice-cold Coke or ice-cold Pepsi. Very small luxuries, but still. Uh, reflecting my own coca colonization, literally then. So I said, give me a few months to exercise and deprive myself of all this craving, you know, kind of go cold turkey. But more important, I said, culturally, a priest goes up the hills, fine, you know, dramatic, like Camilo Torres. You know? And maybe it uh, breaks a certain cultural barrier, but that is not the main barrier to break. You know, there have been guerrilla priests before in our struggle against the Americans. The problem is, there are so few Christian left people, you know, progressives, even radicals, willing to consider communists as human beings and not as devils. That, you know, the whole left movement, including its Christian portion, is so full of devils in people's minds. They think of it as cosmic, you know, God versus Satan, evil principle, good principle, instead of looking at it as human choices, human phenomena. So I said, we must exorcise the left of its devils and see it as a human process. Some are good, some not so good. And for that, there must be people who are willing to stick around and talk and explain, what engage in what I call unfinished conversations. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Except <laughs> the military knocked on my door one morning, September 23, 1972, and said, come on, we'll bring you to prison. It's a good thing I wasn't there. So I went underground. I didn't want to spend my life in prison. Well, I eventually did, but not by choice. In the mountains of Mindanao, Father Navarro hears news of Batman, the runaway guerrilla soldier. <laughs> Aloy's radio brings information that Batman has been shot and captured by rebel forces. Itugan si Batman, kung itudlo nga naani anang kumtura na buk sa suba. Matud pa ni Batman, Father Navarro receives instructions from Oris, who assigns the rebel priest to question Batman. Batman tells his story. His uncle is an Elsa Massa vigilante who ordered Batman to leave the guerrilla army and join the government forces. Batman admits he has in fact given the military information about the revolutionaries, specifically naming Oris, Dadang, Father Navarro, and members of his own community. He was seriously wounded and captured, returning to his village, apparently unaware of the chaos he had caused. <laughs> Batman also names a local man whom he says is a military informer. The guerrillas act quickly and arrest the man. Mm -hmm. 
Five days later, the man is released for lack of evidence. Now, the gorillas must decide what to do with Batman. Father Navarro sets up a people's court and turns the decision over to Batman's community. Religious leaders and elders from Batman's village travel to the hidden location. They join Father Navarro, who represents the NPA. The discussion begins, but the war limits their choices. Either they expel Batman from their area, hoping he won't fall into military hands, or they must execute him. Dante and the Partido Nung Bayan are getting deeper into vigilante territory. They hire extra bodyguards. There are reports of campaign workers being harassed and killed. Are you fighting for your own security? What, 320? Al Samasa threat? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because uh, I think we should uh, do a lot of explaining to the people to enlighten them about. Uh, about uh, this Al Samasa and uh, what should be their responsibility. And they see you as a number one communist, the Al Samasa. How are you replying? I to think, that? I think. Because, uh, well, uh, they, they know that I, I was the organizer of uh, the NPA, but I don't uh, consider the Al Samasa as a uh, people's movement. It is uh, being organized by the military through coercion. Have they threatened your life at all? No, no, not yet, not yet. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure yet if uh, they'll not do here in Mindanao. And it's the first time I'm here going in their area. <laughs> so I, I also want to find out what should be their attitude. <laughs> Bawat Pilipino na nakakita ng landas ng kanyang paglaya, nakakita ng landas ng kanyang pag-ulad, sapagkat sa landas na yan, kung tatahakin niya yan, mawawala yung kanilang economic and military interest sa Pilipinas, kagad sila maglalagay ng kapirasong kahoy, tatakman nila ng kumot, tasabihin sa iyo, multo yan, huwag kang tatahak dyan. Pero mga kababayan, alam ko, hindi na tayo mga bata, tayo maulod na, na madali na natin tanggalin yung kumot na yan.
worried that there'll be attempts. Uh, They're only worried of their life of their own. They are up with their own shadow. They will come here. We don't attack them. We don't uh, harass them. They will come. They are worried because they believe that the Al Samasa are terrorists or savage people because of the misinformation campaign of the media in Manila. But now they realize that they have been touched here in the past days. I don't allow my people to harass them because if we will harass them, they will be more uh, popular. You don't think that the PND will win? It will not because the anti communism fever has spread like wildfire throughout the Philippines and they are identified with the communists. Are they are identified only. Maybe some of them are communist, meaning uh, using wittingly as a tool of communist propaganda and objectives. Buscaino is identified with the NPA and the commander of the New People's Army throughout the Philippines. Nobody can deny that as a commander of the NPA, you are a party card-bearing member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. The program is good, but the fact that it is uh, a Marxist-Leninist uh, idea it is still uh, not good because the takeover of the communists is always bloody and we don't want bloody takeover. Partido Nang Bayan is coming into Davao, June Pala territory. is scheduled to stop in Digos on the outskirts of Davao. Here, Dante knows he will have to face a crowd of vigilantes and their supporters. Talagang nandiyan pa yung kahirapan natin. Kahit na umabot tayo ng dalawang daang milyon sa yaman ng Pilipinas, napakayaman ng bundok natin, may mga minor siya, may mga mina, napakalawak ng gubatan natin, lalo na sa Sierra Madre na pinagtaguan ko, ang lalaki ng mga punong kahoy, ang daming nyog, ang daming tubuhan, ang daming ilog at dagat na maraming isda. Saan ka nakakakita? Pagka gustong magkape mga Pilipino, no, wala silang asukal, gustong magprito ng tuyo, wala silang mantika, gustong gumawa ng bahay, wala silang tabla, gustong magulang ng isda, wala silang ulam. Oh. E pa, paano po yung maling patakaran ng ating bansa, pinakukutkod natin sa mga tayuan, yung ating dagat, inuuwi nila yung mga nauhuli nila, pinahahakot natin yung ating troso, pinahahakot yung ating uh, mina, yun na mga... Uh, Yun naman po, pra, dapat dito na gawin kung anong nagagawa siya na napakaraming bagay upang magkalunan ng trabaho, ay tinadala pa kung saan, sa labas. At kung meron mang ginagawa sa Maynila, ay hindi na po, Ari. Huwag na tayong paninlang dyan sa komunismo na yan. Walang komunismo. Ang, ang problema natin, kung matapat mong pag-aralan, ano ba talaga yung problema? No? Yan. Kawalan ng lupang masasaka kamahalan ng bilihin, kawalan ng trabaho, pero masusulusunan natin yan kung matapat ka. Kailangan magkaroon ng tunay na reforma sa lupa, ng tunay na pambansang industrialisasyon, ng isang gobyerno na ang mamamayan ang nakapangyayari, isang bansa na hindi pinakikialaman. Yun ang solusyon. Kahit na sinong Pilipino, 
Yan ang magiging solusyon niya kung matapat siyang pag-aral ang ating problema at maayusin ng ano yung solusyon. Kaya, kung bumapayag kayo mga kababayan, narito si Dante, hindi upang mag magpaboto. Kung hindi, ang gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo, kung gusto ninyo talaga magpagbabago, kung gusto ninyong makaalis tayo sa kahirapan na yan, ano nga ba yung pangarap ng tao? Napakasimple na pangarap ng tao. Kung sana gusto mong kumain, meron kang kakainin. Kung gusto mong magbihes, meron kang damit. Kung gusto mong manahanan, meron kang bahay. Kung gusto mong paaral ang mga anak, mapapaaral mo. Kung may sakit, mapapagamot mo sana. Meron kang kinabukasan, meron kang kapayapaan, meron kang dignidad, meron kang pagsasarili. Yan ang pangarap natin. Pero hindi manggagaling po yan kung kanino. Manggagaling lamang po yan sa atin lamang. Tayo mismo ang gagawa. Ang, nag, ang tagal na nating naghintay sa mga palit-palit na gobyerno, ang tagal na nating umasa na sana manalo ng ganitong kandidato, ay magkakaroon tayo ng pagbabago. Ang tunay na pagbabago mula sa kahirapan tungo sa pagkakaroon natin ng tamang buhay ay manggagaling lamang sa mamamayan. Kaya po, ang siguradong pagbabago ay mga kandidato na gagawa ng batas na galing sana sa atin. Kayo ang pipili. Bahala na kayo kung gusto rin sinong pili. Ngayon po, yan ay tinatawag na yan sa alyan ng bagong politika. Yan po ang bagong politika. Dante and the Partido Nang Bayan turn back to the capital city for the last leg of the campaign. Manila, I keep coming back to Manila. Simply ain't no place like Manila. Manila, I'm coming home. Manila, 12 million people. The communist guerrillas call it the mouth of the enemy. Whoever controls the capital city controls the Philippines. Manila's newsboys hawk the headlines of a presidency under siege from its own military. During her first year, Mrs. Aquino faced four separate coup attempts by rival factions within the armed forces. She survived, but with each coup attempt, another liberal is dismissed from her government as she trades people's power for military support. Manila, I keep coming back to Manila. Simply ain't no place like Manila. Manila, I'm coming home. Five weeks after the Mendiola massacre, another slaughter. The army kills 11 villagers while hunting for communist rebels. Mrs. Aquino talks peace with the Rebel United Front, the NDF, but the talks fail. The president turns back to a military solution. The Philippines is a war zone, again. There are a lot of things happening under Mrs. Aquino that were happening before and just continued happening. She never really made any difference over them. Military personnel who are committed to crushing the insurgency and who sees insurgency as operating at armed, clandestine, open level, even electoral level. They think that's all insurgency. And they're operating. And I don't think, despite her official title as Commander-in-Chief, that she is the Commander-in-Chief of the military. <laughs> Honored guests, fellow workers in government, as we raise the flag of our country, I take special pride in saluting you, the defenders of our nation. The February Revolution has meant many things to many people, but it holds special promise for you, the military. February 1987, the first anniversary of Mrs. Aquino's revolution. 
Two million people cram Edsa Boulevard. As commander of the military, General Ramos keeps one watchful eye on his restless soldiers and the other on Mrs. Aquino as she hovers over her revolution. Smoky Mountain, a steaming garbage dump in Metro Manila. People live here, thousands of them. They scavenge for a living. They look for glass or rubber or plastic. The price of garbage hasn't gone up since the revolution.
A group of squatters is still trying to get Mrs. Aquino's attention. They hope they can persuade the government to give them a better place to live. But the massacre of other demonstrators at Mendiola must give the squatters second thoughts about attending demonstrations. The massacre also strengthens the hand of an underground which calls for urban violence. The foot soldiers in this urban war are called sparrows. They assassinate police chiefs and army officials in the cities. Their tactics are violent and controversial. But the sparrows claim they must attack the intelligence officers who are the eyes and ears of the government's military. What were you, what were you before you were a part of huh? yeah. uh, organizer what? in the Sengulok. Uh, before? Sa, 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 uh, among, um, uh, these men are sparrows. We meet them in the house of a sympathetic farmer on the edge of the city. We film the sparrow's routine. It is well rehearsed. Tail sink two. Three tail. Terrio was once a sugar worker and a union organizer. He was driven underground by death threats. Now Terrio is a sparrow, a partisan. Bangut sang hulag sang partisano abi nga ari sa nagahulag sa sudad nga inis ya malapit ni sa sa ba ba sa buwa sa kwanbla sa kaway. Bangut sang kagamay nga pirsa. Nung kagang India hay pagir ang ginagamit sa doon sa ano. Kailangan mo kung magamit ka sa taktika mga bila sa countryside yung paggamit tabi ganyan yung purmi ka. Hindi ka pwede maka ano sa syudad, maka mobile. Kaya may madasig kang mga kwanan siyang kaway, matumpukan. Lain sa partisano nga ang iyang paghulag bilang isa ka sibilyan. Nga nag-upod man dira sa paghulag sa mga sibilyan sa sulod siyang syudad. Nga hindi na ma-identify. Kaya ang kaway, kabalo na gitman ng ngulag sa partisyano, sibilyan, mga pariyo. Kung muna ganun problema sa militari, kung paano nila ma-identify ang sparrow na nagagawa sa sudad, kaya hindi na makilala. Sila ya kilala na. Kung kaabot siya nga arad ang target, bang! Dante, Bernabe Biscano speaks out against the political assassinations. The underground reacts, accusing its former commander of becoming an armchair revolutionary. But Dante insists the sparrows will only trigger a backlash from the vigilantes and the military. Three months later, Dante's predicted backlash is played out on the six o'clock news. Government soldiers sweep through Manila slums and arrest men between the ages of 18 and 25 as suspected sparrows. Deputy Chief ng Police Station No. 8 ng Western Police District. Si Mediavilio, isa sa may pinakamaraming parangal na opisyal ng Police Maynila. An informer stands behind half-open blinds. One by one, the men are brought before him. Isa sa kritikal na lugar sa Metro Manila na hinihinalang pinagtataguan ng mga membro ng NPA the man behind the blinds gives a sign. A communist is named. This is a six o'clock news in the Philippines. Ayon sa ilang saksi, lumapit ang dalawang lalaki sa magkabilang tagiliran ni Medina.
In the mountains, the people's court has reached a decision about Batman. Father Navarro delivers the sentence to the NPA headquarters. It's not the decision they anticipated. Now they must decide whether to carry it out. I watch Father Navarro, Oris, Dadang, and Sandy, a local organizer. Four people trying to weigh the necessities of a guerrilla war against the justice that they are fighting for. At first, I decided to have an expulsion. But the problem there is, where can we put him? Since the responsible masses in the organization, the Datu can no longer trust him and can no longer let him live inside their territory. And since Batman have so many damage done to the masses, especially when he was in the hands of the military. So, that's why I prefer to decide death penalty. Was it a hard decision for you? Yeah, since it's not really easy to decide a life in an individual. Personally, I had been longing and really dreaming that we could do away with this death penalty and really have a judicial system that is more human. But considering the case of Batman, it really endangered the life of many workers and many farmers and people in the community. He mentioned many names from his community, from his barrio. And the people really feel that if this person stays alive, their security is in danger. Okoy, a member of the headquarters, is assigned to tell Batman the decision. Are you ready, he asks, to accept the decision of the People's Court? At the same time, government troops have been sighted near the guerrilla headquarters. The government has given the local people an ultimatum. Either they join the Elsa Massa or their villages will be attacked. The revolutionaries decide to strike first. Plans are laid and bombs are made. Guerrilla foot soldiers are not told the exact target of an attack until a few hours before they move out. Hammock, rope, 
and rain curtain. Ration of dried fish, five kilos of rice, and a landmine bomb equals a 22 kilo pack, not including an M16 rifle. Poloi packs his radio. He pulls his antenna down from a tree, shutting off all contact with headquarters until the attack is over. The unit first digs holes for the landmines and then fox holes for themselves. Advance reports from the local people have told them to expect a foot patrol, maybe more. We wait. It's not a foot patrol. It's a full company of 60 government soldiers. The information was terribly wrong. We run. Okay, column three. Poloi killed by enemy blocking force. Papa Delta. Poloi. The radio operator is shot through the chest protecting our film crew. Forced to retreat up an impossible hill, we leave him behind. Three other comrades separated from main force. No contact until now, Papa Delta. Column five. One comrade wounded, Papa Delta. Column six. Company restrained Oki, but morale is low, Papa Delta. Poloi is dead. And so is Batman. Poloi's body remains in the hands of his enemy, while the NPA returned Batman's coffin to his father. Oh, hi. Okay.
the last day of the campaign. In Manila, Dante has finished his last speech. The campaign is over. Manila's radios spew out a litany of names and election results. Mrs. Aquino's party wins most of the seats in the Senate and the Congress. The Partido Nang Bayan receives just 8% of the popular vote, winning only two out of the 200 seats in Congress. Dante and the other six PNB senatorial candidates lose. At last count, 26 PNB campaign workers and one congressional candidate are dead. Four weeks later, Dante is ambushed by gunmen in uniforms. Two of his companions are killed. Dante survives. Afterwards, we find a visibly tired Dante who still believes that violence from the left should only be used as a last resort. If the ruling class will resort to, to counter-revolutionary violence, then you have no alternative but to counter that with the revolutionary violence. But uh, in the special case of the Philippines, right now, I think uh, the left should uh, pay more attention in uh, organizing the workers together with the farm workers as well as the urban poor and uh, that uh, that needs a kind a, a form of struggle that's more uh, democratic a, uh, a necessity to able to be able to reach those people via what uh, they they will perhaps call a uh, an open struggle or parliamentary struggle in the end, though, do you think it's going to take armed struggle to really change things? My personal uh, analysis and opinion right now is that uh, uh, armed struggle should be secondary. People in the so-called center, or even people in the liberal elite, are not going to protest very much when known left leaders, left organizations get hit by some paramilitary group. They'll start protesting when their own people get hit, their own middle class liberals get hit. 
And that's what we've been telling them. Look, uh, terror, paramilitary, once it gets going, does not distinguish. No? It starts with hitting the so-called hard left, and a lot of those are ready to go underground and fight. Then they start hitting those who want to remain legal forever. Then maybe some of these also go underground. Then it will hit anyone who is liberal and wants space for unorthodox ideas, wants some shade of red, red in the rainbow. And I said, for your own uh, safety, you better start opposing these uh, paramilitary uh, groups. These are my stories from inside the Philippine Revolution. Their restless call for change resonates, like the sound of a rustling of leaves in a distant, yet now familiar, cane field. Of course, these stories once told don't stop. The landlords in Congress have watered down yet another land reform bill which appears destined to fail but the sugar workers of Negro still dream of land and liberation. Ed Delatore no longer paints in his garden in Manila. Following threats on his life, he fled to England where he lives in temporary exile. Oris came down out of the mountains to attend an underground meeting in Manila. There, he was betrayed by informers and arrested. Dadang and Father Navarro remain in the mountains, where the armed forces of the Philippines have bombed their area as they said they would. Radio DJ June Pala ran for mayor of Davao City, with a Tad Tad commander as his running mate. They lost. The last time I saw Dante, he was headed back to his village where he began the revolution 20 years ago as strategic a position as any from which to contemplate his own future and the future of the Philippines. Next time you see around, if you want blood will flow in the Philippines, it will flow. The fact that blood will flow, why is this better than what you say the communists are doing? It's useless to answer your interview because it seems to me that you want the NPA and you don't want our crusade. And you are inciting people not to support us. Where is more uh, terroristic, me or Hitler? I don't know. Who do you think? Mm, I have not started my terrorism yet. But if, the, if, you, if, you, if you challenge me to start, I could start shooting. <laughs> With arms unbound, we fly to war. Embrace the slaughter that we abhor. And we go on, searching for answers.
sa kung saan saan Ang kalikas ay sinasamsam Ang kalawak ay kinatamkam Ang kapwa-tao'y itinakmil Ngunit wala doon ang kasagutan Ngunit wala doon ang kasagutan